So the first tip I want to say is you can use countertop material, uh, which is basically you know particle board with maybe a formica or some other hard uh, thing laminated onto it. Uh, you can just cut this out with a, I just use a jigsaw. It doesn't have to be perfectly round, but uh, it doesn't have to be round at all, really. I just like it round. And I drilled a couple little holes for my bat pins, and this this is great. These don't warp very quickly. They will warp over time, but they, you get a lot of use out of them before they do that. And I just scrounged up this piece of countertop. Uh, I got out of the dumpster, actually, but you can scrounge up sink inserts and, and all kinds of it, and you can make, make yourself plenty of batches in that. It's, good, it's a good material. A couple tool tips. Uh, sure form tool. You can just use these wood planers. Uh, these are great for when it's weather hard uh, or even a little bit softer, shaving up and getting rid of um, basically just shaping. It's sort of like trimming, but you can shape with your hand. Uh, really good tool for that. You definitely should try it out sometime, especially if you have a real uneven, uneven surface you want to you want to trim over a large area. Uh, credit cards using credit cards for ribs. These type of lids, jar lids with a button on it. Um, these are good for trimming. If you have a pot like this, and let's say you know you want to trim, this is this, but you know pretend. You can set this on top like this, and you can press down, and it helps so you don't cave in this if this is thin or, or whatever. It also just helps give you a little bit of, um, so you don't wear a smooth part there or whatever. You can put it upside down, or you don't want the ring to show it. It's a handy tool. I use it all the time in trimming. Um, I use this quite a bit. This is, this is a silicon carbide um, valve grinding compound. You can get it at auto mechanic stores. It's basically just a silicone carbide powder and like oil. Use that on lids when it when it's um, when it's dry, and you know grind the lid down, and it will it will grind away the clay and make your lid seat nice and tight. Um, it's a nice way to polish things after after they've been fired. Uh, one thing I like to do is if I have broken plaster bits, is I use them to make stamps. If you can see, there's a stamp on there. And then a heat gun. I recommend one of these for drying stuff out on the wheel real quickly. Uh, you can't go too much, but you can help firm it up. Um, or if you not don't really care about saving it, you can dry stuff out to leather hard relatively quickly. Um, danger, of course, is that it can crack it if you dry it too fast or uneven. But heat gun is handy to have around for those things. One way to combat S cracks, which I can talk about more uh, later, is to dry it evenly. Obviously, that's the, that's the primary way. And this is a wear board I use, which is just a piece of OSB. It could be any kind of board. I just happen to have that. Uh, the key thing here is it's got drywall screwed to it, and then I set the pots on the drywall surface. Um, the drywall is really smooth, so it won't mar, like this is rough, and you can get those markings on your pot, but the drywall has a nice smooth surface, and it, ha it sucks the moisture out of the bottom of the pot, um, so the bottoms dry a little bit along with the sides of the pot. And then as soon as you can, you, you know, again, pretend here. As soon as you can, you flip the pot upside down like this, and, and it dries a little more evenly. And that can help reduce S cracking. So I like using drywall on all my surfaces. If you see, you know, I've, got, I've got drywall on all my boards for that reason. Helps, helps it dry. Uh, it's a nice smooth surface, sponges off really well, and it's cheap, easy to replace when they get old. I think I've mentioned this before, but I use trash compactor bags for my clay bags. They're a nice. Uh, inexpensive, readily available source of, of pretty good bags. See, I'm right there. That's what I use, and uh, I really like them. So, I have mentioned this before too. I use an old electric skillet for my wax resist. Um, I have it. I leave it set at the temperature that's perfect, and I just plug it in when I'm ready to use it. It'll melt my wax. This is my brush, my wax brush. Um, and it'll keep it melted while I'm while I'm working, and I can because I have a thermostat, I can regulate the heat perfectly. Uh, it's a really nice way to keep your wax readily available and, and fairly safe. Really, another tip to help you uh, get motivated is to clean your studio. Not only is it safer, but a nice clean a nice clean wheel with clay ready to go, and and not a lot of clutter everywhere, uh, helps facilitate you to work. It's inviting. A messy studio isn't as, isn't as inviting and probably won't be as productive. So I encourage you to spend probably 30 minutes after every 
after every day, cleaning up your studio, making it ready for the next day. All right, another thing I recommend is that you throw with muddy water. Muddy water will absorb slower than clean water, and uh, you won't run into oversaturating your clay quite so quickly. You can throw with a little bit of dirty water. Okay, I'm going to throw a real small thing off the hump here to illustrate a few techniques that I know to get rid of best cracks. One is when you go to open, just be be fairly sure about it. Don't don't linger. Okay, go in and out. Don't mess around too much. Then, without adding any water to my hands, do your first pull. That's one of the tricks that helps. They say. So I don't know how successful and important it really is, but I do it and. It does seem to reduce the S cracks. Okay. Um, another way S cracks can be avoided is by compressing the bottom, but when you throw off the hump, it's difficult. One way you can compress the bottom is to squeeze in here from the side just a little, and that can help compress it. Um, make sure there's no water in the bottom. Keep the water out of the bottom, and that'll help too. Here's an example of an S crack. I don't know if you can see that. and that comes from drying unevenly. Now this is a mortar and pestle. I threw it off the hump and the bottom is relatively thick. So you know the outside dried quite a bit faster than the bottom initially and then I couldn't compress the bottom very well so I got this S crack. They happen despite my best efforts but those tricks should help cut, cut down the number of S cracks to a manageable amount. Another tip that you see potters do is they use a leather chamois for the rim. Um, I found that leather chamois rot and get soft and I lose them in an area of thing. <laughs> Not that you can't lose this, but this is a piece of plastic. It's just a piece of plastic bag. I find that does the job just fine. It's actually quite glossy. As Mac, Matt Long said, a chamois is like a, sham, a chamois is like lipstick and a piece of plastic is like lip gloss. It works the same way. And I keep mine in the same location all the time, so I don't lose it. Okay, another trick: when it comes to cutting the knife, cutting the cutting the uh, side of the knife. Some, sometimes I'll show you. Okay. Okay. Now you have this this bit of clay here. You want to remove. When you go back in with the knife underneath like this, you can lift it up, and it can stick to the side. It can stick to the side of the pot. So one handy trick to do to avoid that is to take your stick, and put it in, take a sponge, and squirt water, squirt water down down it. And it pours in that little little moat. Okay, you don't need much. Just put a little water in there. And then when you scrape this off, it doesn't stick to the pot. It slides right off. Keeping the edges dry uh, with a rib or with a knife can help cut down on the saturation. So if I then wanted to work on the upper part of this, if I wanted to work on the upper part of this pot, I can I can scrape off the bottom part, and that'll keep the slip from from oversaturating the clay. That's that's another nice tip. 